So yes, tonight we're going to be doing two devotionals. I have two devotionals that I'm being led to read. And then we're going to hop into three scriptures. And then after the three scriptures, I'm wanting to go on Instagram and do a live on Instagram where we just chat and talk and stuff like that. So hopefully you guys can also meet me on Instagram. My Instagram is royal.femininity. Disclaimer, don't get scammed by another person out there. They take my bio, my pictures, like everything, how my page look, and they put it on their page. And they also have the same amount of followers. Not followers. Yes, they have the same amount of people that's following me as well. So... If you look at the number of posts and the number of people who they are following, it's not congruent with my original Instagram page. So just be aware of that, you guys. Be aware of that person who's scamming to be me. Again, I do not do readings. Hello to everybody in the chat. I don't do readings. I don't ask people for money or donations. My supporters asked me to put up my cash app so that they can cash at me. But other than that, I don't ask for money. I don't ask people to give me money. I don't charge people for anything. Um, so, yes. And the, the, the businesses that I am a brand ambassador for, Divine Empress and Friendly Favors, you strictly go straight to their websites and use my discount code and purchase through their website so i don't get any money from you guys you guys please be aware of scammers needless to say let's hop right into this scripture but before we start i have like something that's in my spirit um like for the last week or so i've been having things that i've had to do and it kind of is like not overwhelming me but it's been like a like dr drug out through my life so i've had to like cast these burdens that i have upon the most high so that i can be strengthened and like i know a lot of you watch my journey you guys watch my journey oh from where i came from in the past and you guys see how strong i'm being Excuse me if I'm talking a little slow right now, but I feel super relaxed and centered. Um, that's also the gift that the Most High gave me, just like complete peace. So like I feel super centered right now and I kind of feel like I'm talking a little slow. But anyway, um, the Most High has given me strength along the way and that's why I named this video, The Most High Keeps Me. Because I know you guys watch my journey and I know a lot of y'all don't really understand. Well, I know some people don't understand how I'm able to continue to like keep going and stand strong. But I know a good bit of majority of you guys out there who watch my journey, you guys know exactly what's going on. And you guys see the Lord moving in my life. You guys are even being used as angels in my life so i see all of the good comments that you guys give me and i am very thankful for that encouragement because on a day-to-day -day basis it's not easy and like i was saying for the last week i've had to do some very intense things especially when it comes to come to my healing so i've not been feeling out of it but i've just been feeling like hmm not my 100% best, you know, and which we all have those days, so it's pretty normal. But through those days, I just got on my knees and I prayed to the Most High to, like, lift some of the emotion that was coming from it up off me, you know, so I could, you know, wake up at a, a earlier hour and have the, um, the spirit to, you know, want to just, like, do things for myself and do things for my kids without feeling like um sluggish and just like i'm dragging myself so 
Um, today was a very good day for me. Um, and I kind of felt a breakthrough today. Hey to everybody in the chat. I appreciate everybody. I appreciate all the love, all the likes, all the shares, all the comments. I appreciate you guys. So yeah, so the number one thing that I do in my life that keeps me strong, like that keep that like the the most high is using to keep me strong is his word. And so I actively read my devotional and I actively apply God's word to my life. And so that's like straight to the source of strength that comes from the most high to keep me, you know, just like peaceful and centered. And, you know, because sometimes when I'm going through things and all of us really, our thoughts can get the best of us and we can start thinking and thinking and thinking. And that thinking leads into action and those actions might not be. Excuse me, those actions might not be what's good for us. And yes, RC, that's like so major. Hey, Hacha, that's so major because I do feel that this season is like ugh, shedding. Like, I'm like, it's like the winter time, right? The winter time comes. And that's cool. That's all cool and dandy or whatever. But see, like, people think that the winter goes straight into spring but if you really think about the season when it's winter everything's like um crusty and stuff but right before spring hits like what like not even right before spring hits but like right in that intermittent phase between winter ending and spring starting you can see some debris fall off of the trees like you can see the stuff that was from the winter shed from the tree like, you can see this stuff that's shedding to enter into the springtime, which is, yes, new beginnings and, you know, new life and stuff like that. So, I do feel like this is a season in my life where I'm continuing, I'm continuing, it's like a, a continual shedding of my past, of the things that, you know, I used to identify with and moving forward in my life is, you know, it's new buds are starting to come, you know, new flowers, okay, so I am feeling a different portion of my femininity, I'm feeling a different essence about myself, now, especially that I'm, like, right in that middle 25, you know, that middle age, when it, in the, in the middle 20s or whatever, I do feel a, like, deeper connection to who i am authentically right yes evolving so without further ado now that that's out the way i feel like it's out the way we're gonna jump into the word like i said i'm gonna do two devotionals and then from the last devotional we're gonna hop into three scriptures then after those three scriptures yes exactly after those three scriptures we're going to probably have a little chat and then i'm gonna take this to instagram and I'm just going to go chill on Instagram just for a little minute. Something's telling me to connect with Instagram. So that's what I'm going to do. And so as it reads for the first portion of the devotional, hi to everybody. I appreciate you guys for coming in and, and being um, respectful. I appreciate that. Okay. Mighty God. Oh, wait. <sighs> Lord, I pray before this. But for the sake of the people that's on this chat, I feel like somebody need a prayer. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, say this prayer for anybody out there. Okay, you ready? Lord Jesus Christ, I come to you in this moment to humble myself more than what I'm already humbled. Lord, I pray that as I decrease, that you increase so that I can be able to deliver this message that you have for me and for your children. Lord, I pray that if any of my sisters and brethren have fallen from the consistency of staying in your word, I pray, Lord, that you put a fire in their hearts to continue to stay consistent. And even if they fall off for their consistency, Lord, I pray that you continue to put that passion inside of them to continue to pick up their Bible and start where they left off continue to keep going no matter where it is that they left off lord i pray for everybody's mental health out there 
there has been a lot of trauma that has happened to all of us in different ways and we have to heal from these traumas and we have to heal our children and our be there for the healing of our other brothers and sisters in Christ so that we can relate to each other and not through judgment but through compassion relate to one another to help each other heal through this process Lord, I pray for anybody out there who is, so to speak, committing blasphemy, blasphemy towards your name, your holy name. You are the life that we all have inside of us. You are the giver of life. You are, you are the essence of everything that we are. And I just pray for those individuals, Lord, that you deliver them. Whether that's today or tomorrow or whenever you see fit, Lord, I just pray that you move in their lives or you have someone that comes into their lives, Lord, that invokes them to change for the better for themselves, Lord. Lord, I pray for all of the children out there who are currently being traumatized and they feel like they have no way out. They feel like they have no one to talk to. They feel like they have no one to turn to, Lord. I pray that you protect these children in the mighty name of the Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Give me a second. In Jesus' name. Mighty God, I delight in your invitation. Cast your burden on me, and I will sustain you. Carrying my own burdens is exhausting. My shoulders aren't designed for the heavy loads, so please teach me to cast all my cares on you. When I become aware that something is weighing me down, I'll examine the concern to determine whether or not it's my problem. If it isn't mine, I can simply let go of it. But if it is my problem, I need to talk with you about it, asking you to help me see it from your perspective and take whatever action is needed I've been learning that I must not let problems become my focus and weigh me down. Instead, I want to bring you my concerns and leave them with you, trusting you to carry my burdens on your amazingly strong shoulders. I'm so thankful for your promise to sustain me and provide everything I need. Your word ensures me that you will meet all my needs according to your glorious riches. In your precious name, Jesus, amen. Now, this word, I was thinking to myself today, I was as I was doing the things that I needed to do, I was like, wow, it's amazing how you could be in a certain area in your life and you like the things that you need are outside of your control but when you are seeking the lord when you are steadfasting in your faith knowing that the lord is going to provide for you in the ways that you care for yourself 
it's amazing to see God come to pass. It's amazing to see how God shows up for you in your life. I know for me personally, I was just like, uh, today I was just sitting in amazement today because here it is. I have some things in my life that the Lord has provided for me and it's not by my might. And I be thinking to myself, like, how I'm going to take care of this, how I'm going to take care of that. But the but because I am seeking the Lord just by reading my devotional, just by opening up my Bible and reading, just by going to Bible study, just by doing the little things that the Lord is asking me to do, even if that's getting up and straightening up my home or washing my clothes or stewarding well with the finances that God did give me or being there for one of my brothers and sisters when they need me, picking up the phone and calling somebody and asking them if they are okay, checking on them, just the little things. You know, God sees that and God rewards us for those things. A lot of us think that majority, I'm not going to say all of us, majority of the world, the world thinks that we need jobs to live how we want to live. We need this and that. Not saying not saying that job, we shouldn't have jobs. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that uh, uh, the world thinks that that's just the end all be all of life. Like if you don't have a job, you're not going to be taken care of. If you don't have this, you're, you're not... You're not looked at as um, you're not looked at as a part of society if you don't do certain things that society is telling you to do. But from my own personal testimony, I can tell you that really the only thing that the Lord wants us to do is focus on Him. If it's not a job that the Most High gave you, you're outside of His will. If it's not finances that the Most High blessed you with from whoever that He gave to bless you, bless it for you, it's outside of His will. And so, some of us are running this rat race, you know, by Marley or you know other people in the world. They call it a rat race. We're we're running this race, trying to run after a dollar, but the dollar is insignificant. Um, incongruent to our soul. The only thing that we can seek to get us spiritually fed and um, just spiritually whole is God's word. That's the only thing that we should be running after. And when we run after God, when we run after fulfilling God's purpose that he has for us, and staying underneath his covenant and teaching our other brothers and sisters his covenant, that is when God bless us with the things that will sustain us. Whether that be a, via a job or via finance or whatever it is. And I know that to be true. I went through a very tough part in my life where I was, you know, having to work day and night and I wasn't like barely getting any sleep and I was like all my money was being eaten up and it was being used up right before I could just like invest it you know where I needed to invest it and I was getting tired of that life I was getting tired of living like that so I got on my knees and I prayed to God and I asked God show me more than what I'm currently in because this does not feel right I don't feel like I'm where I need to be in my life I don't know. I just didn't know at that moment. And I asked God, I said, even if it hurts me, even if this path that you have to take me on hurts me to get to know who you are, reveal it to me. Let me know. Let Show me because I'm ready for another level. I'm ready. And I really felt like that. And once I asked for that, that's when I got into the, the cult situation. And I was learning a lot of things through the cult. A lot of people think that you know, me being in that cult was just like a screw up and I was wasting time and I wasted my life. But when I went through that situation, I learned so much from that, y'all. Like, I'm, I learned so much from that. I'm 25 with, with like a 40-year-old mentality, like literally. And 
I really wouldn't change nothing. I would have changed a couple things, but I wouldn't change the majority of what I went through only because it gave me so much wisdom. It propelled me into the position that I'm in, that I'm in today that would have took me years, you know, to get to today where I'm sitting now. And on my way, um, you know, on my way to healing myself and, you know, just continuing my journey because it's not over. My journey is not over. But on my way to healing, I have had to learn how to get on my knees and give my burdens to God. Like when it comes to my finances, it's not the best. I know that it might look like it's the best because I keep myself up and the things that I have, I keep it up. But I want y'all to know that the Lord is blessing me with what I have. The things that you see me with, the Lord is blessing me. I could tell you exactly where everything that is on me right now, I could tell you exactly where it came from. And this is not no designer. This is not, you know, but because the Lord blessed me because of my faith and because of me seeking him, it look like I'm rich, okay? But I am rich in spirit. I am rich in God's grace. I am rich in God's glory. I am rich in God's mercy. And it's so imperative. <laughs> it's so imperative. And God tells us, like, this is like, I know majority of humanity knows this saying right here. Seek ye the kingdom of God first, and then everything else shall be added unto you. I don't think we understand how significant that is. That just that piece of word that God gave us, how significant that is in our lives. I want you to test it out in your life. Test it out. If you think that I'm tripping, test it out in your life. Don't seek God. Don't read your word. Don't do nothing. Don't, don't, don't do none of that. Don't even, don't, don't try to get close to God at all, right? And see how your life goes. You're going to be so stressed out. You're going to be trying to like make ends meet you're gonna be trying everything to get yourself to where you need to be and you're gonna continue to just spiral down out of control right and then get into your word start seeking God on another hand start sit start seeking God start opening your Bible start looking for God to send you into the direction that you need to go in and watch your life change Watch your life transform into something that you didn't even know was possible. That's because we are only, God only wants us to seek him. And once we seek him through his word and through, you know, the, the avenues that each and he gives each and every one of us to seek him through, he will give us what we need. He will give you that job. He will give you that spouse. He will give you that money. He will give you those clothes. He will give you that car. He will give you that mind. You know, he will give you that mind. If you ask God to help you with your thoughts, if you ask God, you say, God, I'm not the best thinker. I I could be an overthinker. I could be a worry wart. Lord, help me rationalize some of these thoughts. Help me give these thoughts to you. Help me understand the thing that I need to work on within myself so that I can get out of my own way, so that I can allow the most high you to have control so that you can pu push me into the direction in which I need to be. And I must say that when you ask God for these things, be ready my dear brother, my dear sister, be ready because the path that God has for you, you cannot lean onto your own understanding. You can't sit there and be like, oh yeah, this is what I think I should do. No, you need to be thinking, oh, what does God want me to do? And when you get that inclination from God to, to put you, to, to when you get that inkling from God and God, whatever God is telling you to do, you have to be ready to be obedient. I don't, I can't, emphasize obedience enough everybody wants to want to listen to themselves they want to listen to what they think that they should do or listen to what somebody else of human descent is telling them to do but i'm telling you i must warn you that is not the way to go <laughs> listen to what god is telling you and be obedient the 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 uh, obedience that god's that god's child has god is so happy about that like when you're obedient to what God is telling you to do and the direction God is telling you to move into, 
He loves that so much. He will actually double your portion. When you are obedient, he will double your portion. But if you're not obedient, you will lose every single thing that you touch. Everything that you touch, it will just dwindle away. It will crumble into ashes because that is not God's will. That is not God's grace. Now, I must say this because some of us might be thinking that we are um, following God's voice. Sometimes the devil can get into our thoughts and tell us things that we should be doing. And we will do that. And then we will see results. And it, it might seem like it's good results, but I must urge, I, I'm, 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 I must tell you that when you're, when you are getting a thought to do something, bring it to God first, pray about it first. You should be praying about it everything every little thing i know this sounds like od but it's super imperative especially into in now today's age because there are so many false prophets there are so many people out there taking god's word using god's word mixing it and matching it and making it sound good and putting all of this glitter all over it only to um to to seduce you into evil ways so you must pray about the things that god is or that you think god is telling you to do and once you get your confirmation when you start getting your confirmation that's when you move and you execute and but you must be very discerning if you're not 100 percent sure ask god to give you the discernment ask god to fill those places where you feel weak ask god to fill those places where you might not be sure because when you pray to God to fill you, he will fill you. He will fill you up and it will be overflowing to, so much to the point where you will be able to give it to your other brothers and sisters. And that is the liking of Christ. That is the likening of Christ. So guys, just be aware that the things that society is telling us, and I'm not telling you this because I'm reading it from the book. I'm telling you this because I'm going through it in my everyday walking and living life. Be aware of what society is trying to teach you. Like, and I'm not saying don't don't take no information from society, but I keep getting this this um voice like guys keep like telling me like um you can't eat from everybody's table that's what i'm hearing right now and i keep hearing that you can't eat from everybody's table you can't eat from everybody's table even if it might be good for somebody else that might not mean that it's good for you you have to ask god about the things that you should and should not be eating and i'm not talking about eating food i'm talking about eating knowledge eating spiritual knowledge i'm talking about eating from you know people's intellect that's what i'm talking about so be weary of the things that society is trying to teach us to eat from because these things are not always good they might be good in certain seasons we might can use these things in certain seasons and certain times but this is not things that we should be taking and living in our everyday life and making that the end all be all of how we're supposed to be thinking and moving because the lord has control over everything everything at the end of the day so we have to be mindful and we have to be obedient and we have to ask god for discernment so that we can be whole within ourselves so that we can move in the likeness of christ on to the next devotional magnificent jesus you are the light of the world because i am your follower i will not walk in darkness but will have the light of life. Although there is much darkness in this world, I always have access to you. So I am never in utter darkness. Yes, yes. The trial before me often looks shadowy, especially as it disappears into the future. I would love for it to be flooded so I could anticipate what's ahead. But the truth is, you are enough. You are with me continually. And you also go before me, illuminating the way. All I need to do is trust you and follow the light you provide. Even when the path before me is dimly lit, your illumination is, is sufficient for me to find my way forward step by step. Someday I will be with you in heaven, where I will see your light in all its glory. Darkness will be a thing of the past, 
and I'll be able to see everything clearly. The Bible assures me there will be no more night. I will not need the light of a lamp nor of the sun, for you will give me light beyond anything I can imagine. In your brilliant name, amen. And that is what I live for. I don't know about you guys, but this is what I live for. Let me tell you, I came out the darkness. I came out the, the, the shadow of hell, living hell. I came from that. When I'm walking on my path and I'm walking on my journey, no, I can't see. I can't. It's completely, talking about shadowy, I can't see into the future. I can't. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't. I don't know what's going to happen a week from now. I have my goals. I know, I know, you know, portion of the vision that God gave me. I know certain things that I want to do, but I don't know how I'm going to get them done. And that's not to say that I don't know what I want in life. It's just to say that you don't even know your own future. You don't know what life has to offer. And I was sitting here thinking to myself the other day, I was like, wow, how did I let this happen? And it's not a it's not a sense of how did you let it happen? It's in the sense of what God has in store for you, the purpose that God has for you. No, you can never look in your in your past and say, oh, I should have never let that happen. I should have never did this. I should have never did that. It's, it's in the past, which means that it already happened, which means that it's, it was already written, which means that God already had control and our, God had already said that it was going to be done that way. So the only thing that you can do is le moving forward into your future. The only thing you can do is lean on Jesus Christ to illuminate that path before you every step of the way. See, we like to sit, and I'm going back to society only because the world teach us, the world teaches us, you have to have a plan B, I mean a plan A. You have to have this. You have to have um, these things set up in order for you to get to where you need to go, right? But you don't know exactly the purpose that God has for you, which means that while you're so busy looking into your future, you're missing out on the moment. You're missing out on the present, the, the specific time in which God has your consciousness actually cognizant and zoomed into. You have to be aware of this very moment. What does God want you to do in this moment? God wants us to stay in the moment. God doesn't want us in the past, in the future. God doesn't want us that. This is why I don't do readings. This is why I don't mess with crystals no more. This is why I don't do none of that. Because God does not want us dabbling in these areas that we that he did not give us access to. The Lord didn't say, child, my child, I give you access to this. Because if he did, we would be there. We would, in the moment, consciously be there. But we're not. We're in this very moment. And he wants us to focus on this moment. If you're not focused on the moment, you're focused on something that's outside of God's will. And that just came through me right there because I had to remind myself today and yesterday, honey, why are you in the future? Stop being in the future. Stop worrying about that. Worry about what's on your plate right now. Worry about what you have to do right now in this moment. You have stuff to do, but you're so busy thinking about the future and keep thinking about the past. You can't even get done what you need to do right now in this moment. You need to take this trash out. You need to talk about this on social media. You need to do this. You need to do that. Right. And so I had to realign my thoughts and I had to get on my knees and ask God to, to protect me from my own mind, my own thoughts, because I can mislead myself into areas in my life that I don't need to be in. I need to be in the moment. I need to be present with the Lord that that he in the moment that he gave me, that he blessed me with. If I'm doing anything outside of that, I am not grateful for what God gave me in this. Hey, come on, baby. Come Come on, I'm streaming, girl. What's up? Go sit down. I'm going to come. I'm going to come. Go sit down. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Do y'all understand what I'm saying? And I keep saying the word anxiety and depression, right? 
when we're in the in the future and in the pre in in the um past when we're thinking about that stuff it gives us anxiety it gives us depression because we don't know what's gonna happen and in our minds we're trying to think about in our minds, we're trying to think about what we can do to get ourselves to, to even start to think about how it will play out. Baby, we don't have control over that. We don't. The moment is here. The moment is now. What are you doing right now in this moment that connects you with the Most High? What are you doing right now in this moment by being obedient to Christ that he'll actually bless you with the things that you need moving into your future. See, oh, this is coming out. Most of the time, the reason why we don't accumulate the blessings that we need or hold on to the blessings that we already have or steward well with the blessings that God gave us is because we're too busy worrying about other things. See, if we were just to stop for a moment and stop worrying about this and stop worrying about that, stop worrying about what she said and what he said and focus on what God gave us right there in that moment, we would be way better off. Our focus would be so much different because... We're going to make it to our future faster than what we, what we could ever imagine because we were present in the moment, right? Whatever, and this brings me back to the last devotional, whatever it is that we feel burdened by, whatever it is that we feel, you know, just like, oh, we can't seem to like get a grip of it. We need to give that to the Most High because the Most High knows things that we don't. And we got to stop trying to figure it out because we only have but so much of power. Yes, God made us in his image. Yes, God gave us, you know, a certain type of air about ourselves. But we need to stop getting so much pump. We need to stop pumping ourselves so much up to the point where we're trying to think that we think. Think that we know better than the most high and we don't we need to give god back his glory we need to give god back the things that we took and and gave to ourselves because we deemed ourselves that we had a mind that we you know we are of some type of significance and that we might know something about something when we don't know nothing we are god's child we are his children we are supposed to allow him to steward us into what it is that he has for us not us trying to steward us ours or not not us trying to store ourselves into the things that we think that is for us that's not what we're supposed to be doing see when you give god the glory when you give god the reins on your horse when you give god the bulls the horns on your bull when you give god that control your whole life will change i'm telling you you're going to be you see what I'm saying? You're going to be in God's presence faster than you could ever know because you've given God that glory. Your life will go from will go from a piece of coal to literal diamonds. Literal diamonds. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? I can vouch for God as a living testimony that when I was not giving God control and I was like, I'm going to try to do this. I'm going to try to make it work for my family. I'm going to try to make it work for my child. God was clearly, clearly kept bringing me out of that situation and told me to sit down, told me to stop, told me to listen. And I wasn't obedient. You see my life torn apart. You could see me broken. I was crying every day. I wasn't, I wasn't the same velvet I am now. But when you see me start to slowly give God control to the point where he has complete control over my you can see the 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 you can see what God has done with me you can see the anointings you can see it and we all have this anointings as a gift if we give God control there is nothing wrong with that there is nothing wrong with giving God the glory we think that we somewhere in our some of us some of us only in our minds we think that if we give something else the glory or something like that, we're taken away from ourselves. Do you not know that when you give your father the glory, the living God that reigns upon you and me and casts control over everything, do you know that when you give him glory, he will he will praise you? Do you know that? Do you know when you give God the glory, he will bless you with the desires that you have and he will make it for his purpose and he will make it for his glory and you will live in complete utter bliss in your waking life as a human. Do you know that? 
Some of us don't know that because the devil lied to us. The devil stole God's word and twisted it and turned it into what he wanted it to be. And we believed it because we were insecure in certain areas in our lives and we couldn't understand certain things about ourselves. And so we fell victim to what the enemy was trying to tell us. And we started living out the enemy's word instead of living out God's word and resisting the enemy. And so I must say, to my brothers and sisters, there is nothing wrong with giving God the glory. I'm telling you, it, it let me tell you, you could be in a room of a, of a thousand people and there is holy music on and you can see the other people jittering and they want to move and they want to move and they want to move. They want to clap out loud. They want to sing out loud, but they're not because somewhere inside of them, they are afraid of somebody judging them or they are afraid of somebody saying something that might not be congruent to who they are. But you, my sister, my brother, you 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 love God so much. But in the midst of those thousands of people, you are the only one praising God out loud, clapping your hands, giving God the glory, shouting out his name. Ha! Ah! hallelujah you're the only one you're the only one because that's how much that you love God just as much as you love God God loves you thousands and ten times more than what you could ever think that you even love him is that not enough to shout about is that not enough to praise God for is that not enough to knock on everybody door in your neighborhood and teach them and show them God's word and tell them that Jesus loved them is that not it Oh my God, I got so many goosebumps right now. Is that not enough to shout about? And you want to know something? A lot of us are afraid to even do that because we know in our heart that once we start doing that, here come the evil one. Here come the evil one trying to come in and sneak in and steal out, steal whatever it is that we have for the Lord. But you have to be strong enough and steadfast enough in your faith to know that the evil one has no control. He thinks he does. The devil, the God, the mighty one gave the devil control just to see how far he would take it. And he's still dragging himself in, into the pits of hell. The devil would never have everlasting life. He he is in eternal death. Do you hear what I'm saying? You better shout like you never shout before. You better praise like you never praised before. You better teach and preach like you never did before. You better be obedient like you've never done have you that you've never did before. You want me to tell you why it's so important right now? Because we are in the book of Revelations. Lord, this is coming out of me. We are in the book of Revelations. We actually have a scripture from Revelations that we're reading. And I want to tell you, we are in the book of Revelations and we are living out God's word. This is the time that we are to repent and turn away from our sins. This is when we start applying God's word for real. This is when we turn away from the things that hurt us and hurt our brothers and sisters. This is the time. Now is the time. You see these people on social media, if you're connected to me and you've seen what I went through, that is the book of revelations false prophecy do you not know god's people wake up you are here we know what's up we already know what's up we know that the devil can't stand toe to toe with us why you think i keep getting online why you think i keep reading from this word online it don't matter how low i feel i still get up and i still do what god asked me to do because ain't nobody stronger than him ain't nobody stronger than the most high and i'm the most highest child even if the devil thought that he had me for a season but that was for a reason okay that was for a reason that was to shine light upon the book of revelations that was a that was for the reason to show other people in christ our brothers and sisters in christ that it is now the time to be serious we are playing with spirituality and religion and throwing these words around and throwing god's words around like it doesn't mean nothing but let me tell you something god is closer now than more than ever in in this time he is closer now than ever in this time. God is actually moving in people's lives way much more than ever in these times. We must be aware and vigilant of the devil and the enemy trying to come and steal the joy that God has given us. We have to be vigilant about that because if you allow the devil to stop you from speaking, stop you from praising, stop you from being obedient, and stop you from steadfasting your faith and to steal your mind and steal your joy, Guess where you're going, baby? You're going to right where the devil is, where he lives. 
eternal death. You cannot want that for yourself. You don't want that. And I know some people are held bond, bond, in bondage in their mind because of their trauma. That's the worst place to be. When you are held bondage in your mind, when you're held in bondage in your mind by your own trauma. And this is why I made the word that I did. I think that was yesterday. I made this word. I said, God gave me this to tell his people. He said, just because you went something traumatic doesn't mean that I meant that for your for your for your downfall. What you went through for tra for trauma or whatever you went through that was traumatic was to be used to glorify me. It was to be used to make you into a better person. It was used to be it was that trauma was to develop you spiritually into a better person. And if you're taking your traumas and you're using it for evil, and you're making that an excuse to do evil and do people wrong, you're you're up for a rude awakening. You are not supposed to take anything that hurts you, harms you, or anything like that and turn it into something evil. You are supposed to take what you've learned or what you've been through and learn from it. You are supposed to transmute that experience as a testimony to teach other brothers and sisters in Christ that he is real and that he will move in your life if you give him the glory if you give him the if you give him the control he will move in your life and he will give you everything that you need you can't be afraid you can't be afraid you can't even be afraid to speak because even if you don't know what to say you still can't be afraid to speak because let me tell you something when God gives you, when when you give God control, God will give you, God will give you everything you need. He will give you the words right on the spot, y'all. I promise you, I didn't know I know I was gonna be saying anything like this right now. I don't even. I'm starting to speak in tongues, low key, and my accent is starting to change and everything. I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know that this was going to happen tonight. But guess what? I was obedient to the feeling. I was obedient to God's voice because God has complete and utter control over me and over my life that when I moved, he gave me everything to say. He gave me everything that I need. Yes, the Holy Spirit, it lives deep within me. Okay? And let me tell you something. God used me in that season because he wants his people to know i'm getting this message again he wants his people to know that it doesn't matter what you go through it doesn't matter what you've seen in life it doesn't matter who what people think of you it doesn't matter what matters is that you got on your knees you repented and you turned away from your sin and now you gave god the glory you gave god the control and now he's able to move in your life you're able to fulfill the purpose and the prophecy that he has over you he's able to anoint you now that is that is it that is it that is it and i hope that you all take something from this and get serious a lot more serious some of us are serious, like me. I'm serious, but tonight I found so much more urgency in this word. I found so much more seriousness. We cannot idolize anything. Stop idolizing that food. Stop idolizing that spouse. Stop idolizing your children. Stop idolizing things. I'm not saying not to care. I'm not saying not to care about these things. I'm saying stop idolizing it. Stop putting these things over God. Stop. Let me tell you, people will say, oh, Velvet, you treat your child bad. When I'm reading God's word, it is important. When I'm reading from, the, from God's word, she needs to sit down. My children need to sit down and listen because my, I need to raise my children in a, such a way because her dad is a false prophet she needs to sit down and listen so while you're sitting there thinking that i'm neglecting my child i'm actually i'm actually pouring into her i'm actually giving her and being an example for her that she needs because there's not another woman out here that i know that's her mother that's gonna do what i'm doing right now that's gonna stop her in her tracks and tell her sit down and listen young lady sit down and listen who else is gonna discipline her so, so the same way we are serious about our spouses and how we're not going to let nobody play with her, 
and how we're not going to let nobody play with him and how we go stand toe to toe and 10 toes down for this person and that person and how we going to ride or die for the for this and that we need to be feeling that same way about Jesus Christ we need to be feeling that same way about the Most High. We need to be feeling this way about God's Word. We need to sit here and be serious about what God, what the purpose that God has for us. We need to be serious, much more serious, because when everything hit the fan, when the Lord comes, comes and take His children and 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 show His face upon humanity, when when that day come. You're going to be, you are going to be wishing that you listen to God. I'm telling you, tomorrow is never too late, but I want you to know something. It's better you do it now than to wait till tomorrow. It's better that you do it now than wait five years from now. It's better that you do it now than say, oh, I'm not done smoking these cigarettes. I'm not done partying. I'm not done doing this. I'm not done doing that. It's better that you do it now than to wait to do these things because your heart, it's going to be measured whether you did it a day before Christ came or five years before Christ came. Your heart will be measured and you don't want to be in the presence of the most high God, Lord Jesus Christ. You don't want to be in the presence of the most high sitting there and saying, yeah, it took me this long to, to do it because I just didn't want to give it up. I didn't want to fall away from my desires and the Lord is going to is going to judge you for that. He's going to say, my child, I've been told you to do that. You know, I told you to stop smoking. You know I told you to eat right. You know I told you to take care of better care of yourself. You know that I told you to get in your word. You know that I told you to do these things, but you fell from my life. You fell from my life. Do you understand? God is gifting us eternal life when we are obedient, but yet you fell from my life. You fell from my grace because you wanted to do what you thought was best for you by fulfilling desires that has nothing to do with my living word. You rather trade in desires and, and fleshly things for everlasting life. I'm seriously think about that. Seriously think about that. You rather trade in everlasting life to fulfill desires that you have. Whether it be sex, whether it be food, whether it be smoking, drinking, partying, whatever it is. Come on, you cannot be that that low vibrational. And I'm not even sp speaking to you guys in the chat. Lord, I love my brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm actually pulling the minds of the people who the devil has possessed. Who the, the people, the minds of the people who the devil has started to take control over. I'm talking to you. Don't let the devil trick you into something that's not worth it. Don't. Don't let the devil think that just because you're fulfilling these desires and that it feel good, that it feels good right now, that you'll ever forever have that. Don't let the devil trick you into thinking that. That's the worst thing that you can do. Fall away from that. No matter how hard it is, get on your knees and ask God to help you. I promise you, he will help you. The Lord will help you overcome these things that you cannot let go of the lord will help you get over these things that you just keep going back to you keep leaving it, going you keep letting it go and then going back to it and letting it go and go back the lord will keep you to stay away if you just open your word read it ask god to fill you ask the holy spirit ask for the holy spirit for your body your vessel your being to be filled with the holy spirit so that you can be of significance to the most high. Let's read from the scripture now. John, John chapter 8, verse 12. Give me a second. I'm almost done, okay? John chapter 8, verse 12. And it says, Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. Hold on. Give me a second. All right, come pray with me. Come here. Come see. Yeah. Listen, I'm going to read this, okay? And I want you to li li um, listen to me read this, okay? Listen, listen. Shh, shh. Listen, listen, listen. Jesus, look, look. Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me. Can I do it? Okay, go ahead. Jesus, Jesus spoke, 
spoke to, to the people, people once more once more and said and said what's happening i am the light of the world i am the light in the world jesus said if you follow me if you follow me you won't have to walk in darkness darkness you won't have to walk in darkness now you have it in not the darkness because you will have because you will have the light that leads to life Jesus Jesus stopped Jesus stopped and told the people once more he said I am the light of the world if you follow me you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life do it. Mm -hmm. We have people scared of for the peoples. For the peoples glad to the father. The father listen to the kids in the playground. He see them have in the playground and said he said no. He said no in the kids and kids very sad because he told her mother on life. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Jesus, Jesus answered. He said, "Since you, since you don't know who I am, you don't know my father. The people who, the people who push God away. The people come who." Come on, mom. Come on. Let me read to you. The one having on the walls and lights, and the lights in the dark was scary, and not even afraid of the monster at all. And he walked to the mountain, to the volo, from the hill, in the fort of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus then, saved him. Yeah, the kids say, Father, is say to have more stuff. And he has some potion to make her feel better for her boo-boo in the night. Mm, so Jesus healed her. Yeah. He had bumped her leg because he's so crying because he is going to help her. So we can have an assurance. Okay, let's read from Proverbs. Can you say Proverbs? Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 4. Oh, what's that, Mom? Let's read from Proverbs chapter 4, verses, verse 18. You ready? Yeah, let me do it. Did Jesus have all this next? So he got to run. So he got run the kids. He said, he said, was it really in the monster? He not free in the monster because I'm here. Oh. Excuse me. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Excuse me, Mama. Excuse me. Listen, I want to read this, okay? Let me read this, okay? Listen. Listen to this, y'all. Mama, I want to pray with you. No, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Listen, 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 I listen. Pray. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You can, you can. I want you to listen to this. Oh, come on. Listen to this, y'all. <laughs> Ellie, listen. Give me one moment and then you can pray, okay? Listen. The warning to guard our hearts is also a warning to not give into the temptation of sinful pleasures of any kind. Indulging in sin is pleasurable at first, but in the end, it promise is empty and bitter. Sin may satisfy short-term desires, but it, its consequences are long-term. Stop it. Returning to our addictions may make us feel better for the moment, but it will damage our progress in the recovery in the recovery back to Christ. Sexual temptation is often very hard to resist, even if we are aware of dangers and consequences of promiscuous sex. Sex outside of marriage is against God's law, whether we are married or not. Throughout the book of Proverbs, there are warnings against promiscuity. Mom, Unfaithfulness can, can destroy family life can and physical now? health. And it may... Shh! 
and it may result in pregnancy. And we all been through this. If sex is among our addictions, we must run away. We must run. We must run from any situation where we might be tempted into sin. We should also seek help from a support group or a spiritual counselor to deliver us the way that Jesus would from the sin. To help deliver us from the sin the way that Jesus would. So this goes right in that hand to what I was saying. Girl, what is girl, what is that? No ma'am. Alright. Proverbs, stop it. Go ahead. No, because you know you've been no. This listen. Listen to what I'm saying. Proverbs chapter four. Verse 18, listen, it says, The way of the righteous is like the first glim of dawn, which shines ever brighter until the full light of day. But the way of the wicked is like total darkness. They have no idea what they are stumbling over. My child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart, for they bring life to those who find them and healing to their whole body. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Avoid all perverse talk. Stay away from corrupt speech. Look straight ahead and fix your eyes on what lies before you. Mark out a straight path for your feet. Stay on the safe path. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. And now we're going to read from Revelations exactly where we need where we are today. Revelations 22 chapter 5. Mm. Okay, give me a second. Chapter chapter 5 it says um Revelations 22 chapter Chapter 22, verse 5, it says, And there will be no night there, no need for lamps or sun, for the Lord God will shine on them, and they will reign forever and ever. This is pretty much just, whoop, girl, this is pretty much just <laughs> the Lord reassuring us that when we get into um, the, the glory of God and he gives us with everlasting, go ahead, no, get down, get down. <laughs> Eliana, get down. No, because you're being obnoxious. Stop it. This is very serious right now. Listen. 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 Jesus is basically just telling us and reassuring us. Not basically, but Jesus is reassuring us that when he gives us with the ever with everlasting life, wherever we are going, there will be no more darkness. We won't need no lamps. We won't need no candles. We won't need none of that because it is going to be everlasting light that leads to life. And on that note, I hope y'all have a blessed night. I hope y'all... Get back into okay. your word and let's practice consistency in the in the um in the word of the in the in God's word. So y'all, until next time, I love y'all. Good night. Say night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Bye. Good night. 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 Good